Well, let me tell you about our next speaker because he works side by side with his parents picking crops. Across the San Joaquin Valley, he never thought that in the year 2004, he would reach a lifelong goal of becoming a NASA astronaut. And in August of 2009, flying a 14-day mission as the flight engineer on Space Shuttle Discovery's mission to the International Space Station. In America, dreams can come true if you work hard enough. And here to give tonight's keynote address, and I would ask if I could for you all to, to sit back down in, in your seats, if, if you'd be so kind, before I bring him up, because it's one of those extraordinary stories of perseverance and of dreams and of hopes becoming reality. And I, I'd very much appreciate if you if you would take your, your seats and... Um, and give a undivided attention to tonight's keynote speaker. Th think about what it is like for someone in his own generation to be able to go from pricking crops to flying in space and doing so with such extraordinary class and never forgetting where he came from. You know, when he looks up at the stars and at the moon, he must see it differently, huh? Um, and yet those dreams do come true. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's keynote speech, thanks to astronaut Jose Hernandez. Gracias, Tocayo. Buenas noches. You know, it was mentioned earlier today that I was a candidate for Congress in the last election cycle, and I was so excited when I saw Vice President Biden here because I saw that podium that had that Vice President of the United States seal, and I said, man, I'm going to get to try that on for size. But unfortunately, they took it away before it was my turn to speak. Pero aquí estamos con Lulac, and I'm just as proud, just as proud to uh, to be speaking with you guys tonight at the podium here with the uh, Lulac logo. So estamos muy agradecidos en estar con ustedes. I want to take the time to uh, to thank uh, our executive director Brent w Wilkes and our national president Margaret Moran for giving me this honor of being able to speak to all of you today, especially the youth. I want to thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much for, for that great opportunity. One of the first things I want to do is I want to tell you a little story about the fact of how my roots to LULAC go back. Back in 1979, as a senior in high school, I was trying to figure out a way to pay for my college education, going to college in 1980. And I applied for a LULAC scholarship in my hometown, uh, LULAC Council 2060. They send m funds to national and they get matched. And I was lucky enough to have received the scholarship. And I looked at that organization. I not only received it the first year, I received it throughout my undergraduate college uh, education. And, and, and I remember when I graduated, I said, wow, what an amazing organization. When I, when I graduate and uh, start working, I'm going to come back and join as, a, uh, as an adult. And guess what? I not only joined Council 2060, I became its uh, president. And I also participated at the national level. I was national vice president for the young adults. And so I, my roots with LULAC go go very, very far. I want to give props to our 2060 Council that's here today. Our president is Dr. Miguel Sanchez, and our youth group is uh, 2061. Uh, Gemma Lopez is our youth president. I want to thank them. Also want you to invite, I also want you to, uh, to invite you to come out uh, tomorrow. 
we have a booth there. Our our our, our council has a booth there, and uh, we've got Mike Perez Perez, who's uh, the who runs the Lulac Aviation Program. You'll see a whole plane there of the kids that are building it together. And I also put a shameless plug for myself because I'll be signing autograph books there for uh, uh, of my book, Reaching for the Stars. Uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to tell you a little story about myself. It was mentioned that I came from a migrant farm working family, uh, which is true. We used to spend nine months in, uh, in the California circuit traveling up and down California, and then three months in, uh, in Mexico, Michoacan to be exact, La Piedad Michoacan. And, and, and what, what, what happened was, uh, was that because I struggled to learn English since we were moving from school to school, math was my refuge. And, uh, and so one plus one was two in any language. And so I naturally gravitated to the science fields. But then a strange thing happened when I was 10 years old. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember the tail end of the Apollo program. And, uh, and, and, and it was during that program that inspired me to become an astronaut. I remember, I remember quite well when we had that good old vacuum tube technology, TVs, black and white, that take five minutes to warm up. And uh, you have to hold the antenna to improve the reception. You can't let go of it, because if not, the reception gets snowy. But it was during that period, the very last Apollo mission, Apollo 17, and it was Gene Cernan walking on the surface of the moon that inspired me. I was watching as soon as my parents allowed me to let go of the antenna in front of the TV, mesmerized. And then I would go outside and I would see the moon out in full glory, full. Would come back inside and see and hear Gene Cernan walk and bounce along the surface of the moon. And I said to myself, De aquí soy. I'm from here. This is, this is what I want to do. And, and you know, you know, the best thing I could have done was to share that dream with my parents. My parents only have a third grade education, but I swear if had they studied, they would have probably been world renowned psychologists because they are the best motivators in the world. I mean, uh, I, remember, I remember when we were work, working in the fields one day, we we're all hot, sweaty, and lodosos dried up, mud on us. We get in the back of the car, my dad's adjusting his rear view mirror and he's looking at us and then he turns around and he looks at us and he says, how do you guys feel? And I was the youngest of four and Marre Songon and I would say, cansados, tired. And he says, we're good. Remember this feeling because you guys have the distinct privilege of living your future now. I even scratched my head. He said, living your future now? Al viejo le pegó mucho el sol, you know. The old man got too much sun out there. And of course, no me aguante. I couldn't resist the temptation of asking what he meant. I said, well, what do you mean, Papa? He said, yeah, I'm not going to force you to go to school. I'm not going to force you to get good grades. Pero si no lo hacen, if you don't do it, this is your future. You don't have to wonder what it's going to be like. You're living it. Así que ustedes sabrán. You guys decide. If you want to live this life, don't go to school. You want to improve yourself, you go to school and get good grades. And that was the motivation. That was motivation. <laughs> mi mamá también, mi mamá también was a great motivator. I mean, every day she used to sit us down in the kitchen table, mientras hacía tortillas, sopa y arroz to feed us, we would have to do our homework. And we weren't allowed to get out until we finish our homework. It only took me one time to try and trick her. I still feel the, uh, the whipping I got. But more importantly, she would use examples. I remember we would go into a bank and change a check. And I was, you know, nine, ten years old. Uh, we were going to this nice bank, Bank of America. And, uh, and, 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 my, and then we would walk and my mom would get me by the, uh, by the sleeve. And she would point at a nicely dressed young man and says, what do you see over there? And I would say, a man? He says, no, she says, I see you. I said, this is why I want you to go to school. I want you to be able to work in a place like this, air conditioning, dressed nicely like this gentleman, 
And I want you to work with your brain, not with your hands. It says, el cuerpo se acaba, your body deteriorates, your brain stays strong. So go to school so you can get a job like this and dress like this. Those were the examples that my, uh, my parents used to use. And I remember when I was watching that Apollo mission, when I got inspired, the best thing I could have done was share that dream with my mom and dad. I remember we were getting ready to bed for bed that evening, and my dad was walking in front of me, and I was walking behind him, and I said, Papa, I know what I want to do when I grow up. He dijo, si, que mijo? I said, I want to be an astronaut. He even stopped. I mean, he stuttered and stopped, and he looked back and said, que, que? I want to be an astronaut. He dijo, vamos a la cocina. So let's go to the kitchen. You don't understand, in the cocina, in the kitchen, three things happen in my house. Okay, you eat, you do your homework, and when you misbehave, that's where you get whipped, all right? Well, I've, we had already eaten dinner, and my homework was done. So I told myself, wow, was it that ridiculous what I said? And my dad sits me down in the same chair that my mom always makes me do my homework in, and in a very challenging tone, he says, ¿Quieres ser qué? You want to be what? And of course, I didn't back down. I said, no, quiero ser astronauta, papá. And he looked at me. He must have saw the determination of a 10-year-old boy. And he said, yo creo que sí puedes hacerlo. I think you can do it. He says, but you need to follow a simple recipe. A recipe I'm going to give you. It says, five ingredients. At that point, my eyes got wide. I became like a dry sponge ready to absorb what my dad was going to tell me. And I said, ¿Cuáles son? He says, first, identify what you want to be in life. What is it that Pepe wants to do when he grows up? Of course, I blurted out, astronaut. Figure I'm halfway there, right? Got one out of five done. Second, he says, Recognize how far you are from that goal. And I thought about it, and I said, you know, he's going to get mad, but I'm going to say it anyway. I said, well, pretty darn far. I'm the son of a migrant farm worker. Instead of him getting mad, he kind of laughed, and he said, I'm glad you recognize that, son, because the third step's even more important. The third step, he says, you got to draw yourself a road map from where you know where you are, which you clearly do by your comment, to where you want to go and outline every step of the way. You outline it because you're going to be tempted to take shortcuts, skip steps, but don't do it. Because you may get there, but you're not going to be well prepared. So draw yourself a roadmap, no shortcuts. I said, what's the fourth step, Papa? Fourth step, he says, you're doing it already, mijo. Get yourself a good education. Educate. Fifth and final, he said, he says, you know that effort you put out picking cucumbers and tomatoes and grapes out in the fields on the weekends and summers? He pointed to my books. He said, you put them here. You put that work ethic here. And when you graduate college and you get your job, you put it in your job. Always give more than what people ask for. That should be your model. Always deliver more than what people ask for. He says, you mix up those five ingredients, mijo. You can be whatever you want, whatever you want in this world, because we're living in the Estados Unidos, in America, the land of opportunity. And, and by golly, I took that advice, hook, line, and sinker. I lived through that advice, and I tell you, it works. I'm here to tell you, it works. Only thing I would add is perseverance. The sixth ingredient, never give up on yourselves. We are our own worst enemies in setting goals that are very reachable. We're afraid to set goals that we think are not reachable. But you know what? With preparation, y ganas, they're reachable. So don't be afraid to set your sights higher than what you set today. Examine what your, your, your goals are today and, set, and tell, ask yourself, are they too low? And if you believe they are, set higher goals for yourself. Because para mí, it wasn't the first time when I first applied after graduate school to the NASA program. I didn't get called the first time. I didn't get called the second time. 
not even the sixth or seventh time. It wasn't until the twelfth time that NASA finally accepted me as the 19th class of astronauts. The twelfth time. And so, what I like to say is, you've got to have perseverance, but smart perseverance. The first six years of my applica application process, era perseverancia ciega, blind perseverance, because I would just apply, 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 and I would get a form letter back saying, dear applicant, thanks for applying, don't call us, we'll call you, kind of thing. It wasn't until the sixth year that I decided to do, I said, you know, let me size up my competition and let me see who they selected. What do they have que yo no tengo? And the first year I found out they were all pilots. I wasn't a pilot. So guess what? I learned how to fly. I got my pilot's license. Another year, another year I found out that they were all scuba rated. I didn't know how to scuba dive. I drove myself to Monterey every weekend and got basic, advanced, scuba rescue, master scuba dive rated. I want to make sure NASA knew I knew how to scuba dive. And then one year as I was working at, Nash at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a, uh, a defense-oriented research laboratory, a project came across my table that took us to Russia in the nuclear non-proliferation arena. And no one wanted to sign up for it because it was tough duty. You go to Russia four or five times a year, three to four weeks at a time, into Siberia, the closed cities, and, so, and mo mainly during the winter time. And no one wanted to do it, but you know what? Jose raised his hand. And you know why? Because a month before, I had heard on the news that Russia and the United States signed agreement to build what was gonna be the International Space Station. It didn't take a rocket scientist, even though I was one, but it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out to figure out that we were gonna be working with the Russians up in space. So I jumped at the chance of going to Russia, not because I wanted to get to know the Siberian countryside, but because it justified me telling my boss, I need a Russian language instructor so I could learn Russian and do my job better. I learned it in four years and I did it, I did it. I did it, yes, yes I did it to do my job better but I did it because I knew NASA would look at that favorably. And it's, that's how you should navigate your career for those of you that are navigating your professional careers. Is re-examine it, start looking at it. Okay, where do I want to be five, six, ten years from now? And start examining and doing a roadmap to get you to that point. Because I think that's the important part in terms of uh, trying to plan for your future is just, just plan it out, draw yourself a roadmap. If you follow that recipe my father gave me, I'm sure, I'm certain, 100% unequivocal, certain that all of you, all of you can reach for your own stars. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much for this kind invitation. God bless you. Adios.